when you walked into the convention center, they had these big banners, and it said, death to Israel, death to America. One of the, the people who were working with me said, you know what, Bob, these people are Muslim Brotherhood. I said, what's that? The Muslim Brotherhood started in 1928 by the founder, Imam Hassan al-Banna. The Muslim Brotherhood had twin strategies. The first strategy is its public face, which is a political organization with charitable organizations. But the core of the organization and the master plan of the organization is a sense of world domination. Their ambition is limitless. منهم من ذهب إلى أوروبا ومنهم من ذهب إلى أمريكا وبدأوا يؤسسون عملا إسلاميا خافت الصوت في أول الأمر واستمروا يعملون فكان ما نرى في الغرب في حدات الطلب المسلمين Barack Obama, listed as a practicing Muslim and Indonesian citizen in school records, early in his presidency, reached out to his Muslim brothers in the Middle East. January 21, 2009, the first head of state that Obama called as president was Palestinian PLO chairman Mahmoud Abbas. Abbas works alongside Hamas, the Muslim Brotherhood terrorist organization whose charter calls for the annihilation of Israel. April of 2009, Obama secretly met with members of the Muslim Brotherhood in Washington, a group whose own documents call for the destruction of the United States and the creation of a worldwide caliphate. Throughout his presidency, Obama has met with Muslim Brotherhood front groups like the Council on American Islamic Relations literally hundreds of times. Now, if my Muslim friends were here and I invited some, I invited Hassan Shibli who used to be a friend of mine until he went over to CARE, which is a terrorist organization. And I tell all my former Muslim friends, if you go to CARE, you become an enemy of the state and an enemy of Tom Trento, an ideological enemy. It's that simple. Hassan Shibli, I understand, was working his little scam with, uh, with the city of Venice. They do this all the time all over the country. When one of us speaks someplace, they go in, play the victim card, and try to get the administration in a particular municipality ultimately to do sensitivity training. CARE is a terrorist organization. They are Hamas. According to Middle East researcher Tony Cartolucci, beginning in December 2010 and early 2011, the U.S. State Department, collaborating with George Soros-funded human rights groups, orchestrated the so-called Arab Spring throughout the Middle East and North Africa seeking to topple secular governments and replace them with Islamic dictators. 
On January 14, 2011, after massive rioting, the first leader deposed was Tunisian President Zain al Abin Ben Ali, who was quickly replaced with an Islamic dictator. April 2011, the Yemeni President Ali Abdullah Sali, in the face of the Arab Spring protests, and was also replaced with an Islamic dictator. Libya took a little more work on Obama's part. Phony protests and stage riots were not enough. Obama engaged in an illegal war against Libya, spurning congressional approval that resulted in the toppling of Muammar Gaddafi on August 23, 2011. There arose no Islamic dictator, however, only anarchy in which Islamic gangs now roam the streets and murder with impunity. Barack Obama moved on to Egypt, no easy country to topple given that the Egyptian president, Hosni Mubarak, has been a steadfast ally of both the United States and Israel for decades. Barack Obama, being the master community organizer that he is, organized the toppling of Mubarak himself. Muslim Brotherhood operatives were dispatched to orchestrate the huge Tahrir Square protests that lasted for a staggering 18 days and numbered hundreds of thousands of people. According to Aaron Klein's book, Impeachable Offenses, on January 29, 2011, U.S. Envoy Frank Wisner secretly met with senior leader of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, Assam el Arian, to plot the toppling of Mubarak. During the Tahrir Square so-called protests, with the State Department, George Soros front groups, and the Muslim Brotherhood pulling the strings, Per emails hacked from intelligence giant Stratfor and released by Wikilinks, Barack Obama secretly phoned Turkish Prime Minister Recep Erdogan at least three times. The purpose of the phone calls was to discuss the toppling of Hosni Mubarak and his replacement. February 1, 2011. Mubarak, bowing to pressure from Obama, announced he would step down in seven months. To Obama, this was unacceptable. Obama informed Mubarak he needed to step down immediately. On February 11, 2011, Mubarak resigned and Obama got on his soapbox to declare to the world that history had been made. But the entire process was a sham. The people of Egypt have spoken, their voices have been heard, and Egypt will never be the same. By stepping down, President Mubarak responded to the Egyptian people's hunger for change. Obama's Islamic dictator, Muslim Brotherhood President Mohamed Morsi, was quickly raised up and immediately amended the Egyptian constitution to give himself dictatorial powers. He then purged the judiciary and military of judges and generals that weren't Islamists. Morsi then went about hunting down his enemies going on a rampage of torture and murder, including openly crucifying Christians. Barack Hussein Obama, our Muslim Brotherhood Commander-in-Chief, all the while continued to support Morsi and sent him $1.3 billion in support of his Islamic dictatorship. This administration, through Secretary Hillary Clinton, is going to announce that it could care less what Congress has ordered about helping the enemies of Israel, about helping those who are terrorizing and persecuting Christians in Egypt and destroying churches and eliminating freedom of religion, and are saying uh, they want to rethink their peace accord with Israel and setting themselves up to be the enemy of Israel. And now this administration, knowing that Congress has a law that says you can't give people money in Egypt unless you can certify to certain facts. And they cannot, not honestly. If they do so now with what we know publicly, we know they will not be honest in doing so. And they're going to give $1.5 billion, not in humanitarian aid, according to this story, not, not food, military aid. So forget all of those speeches that this president gave at APAC and, oh gosh, we're, going to, we're Israel's best friend, we're going to help them because, oh no, we're going to give people 
who had the power to destroy Israel on the border with Israel, military aid as they are planning, many there, make it clear, they hate Israel, they hate us. And I've said over and over, we don't have to pay people to hate us. They'll do it for free. We have to quit funding the enemy of us and the enemy of our friends. This is insane. It's time that we do not provide military aid abetting and assistance to people that want to destroy Christians, that want to destroy Israelis, and that want to put the world in turmoil and have everyone living exactly as they dictate. We want to keep some freedoms here and in Israel, and the way to do that is not to fund and provide military assistance to anyone unless we know they are our friend they're Israel's friends. They're the friends of our friends. To do otherwise will bring calamity on this country like they will not realize until it's too late. What difference does it make? We had four dead Americans. And welcome back to Hannity. Tonight we continue to follow the growing controversy about how the Obama administration is gifting some of our most deadly military weapons to the radical regime in Egypt as part of an aid package. And to demonstrate just how idiotic this proposal is to give away 20 of our F-16s and 200 of our tanks to a country led by a 9-11 truther, a guy that refers to the Israelis as descendants of apes and pigs, somebody like Mohammed Morsi. But the Egyptian people quickly tired of Obama's Islamic brother-in-arms and threw him out, the first country to reject one of Obama's Islamic dictators. Morsi is now under arrest by the Egyptian military, facing charges of murder, kidnapping, and conspiring with the terrorist group Hamas. The Obama administration is currently gorged with Muslim Brotherhood operatives, hiding behind the mask of front groups masquerading as Muslim outreach groups. Mohammed el who gave a speech in 2004 honoring the Ayatollah Khamenei, known as the face of Islamic terrorism, is now the head of Obama's Homeland Security Advisory Council. Instead of working to keep America safe, however, el is currently working behind the scenes to return the Muslim Brotherhood back to power in Egypt. He has even gone so far as placing the so-called four-finger Muslim Brotherhood salute on his Twitter avatar. The symbol is used in support for ousted Muslim Brotherhood Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi. But back to our Muslim Brotherhood Commander-in-Chief, Barack Obama. On June 4, 2009, Obama gave his so-called Cairo speech in Egypt, where he demanded the front row be reserved for Muslim Brotherhood members. To the consternation of then-Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak, the Muslim Brotherhood at the time were outlawed in Egypt because of their extensive ties to terrorism. The only answer, as shocking as it sounds, is that Obama is a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, the puppeteers behind the push for a worldwide caliphate. The evidence? Obama has at least six Muslim Brotherhood members inside his administration, including the head of the Department of Homeland Security Council, Mohammed el -Abiyari. who openly supports the newly formed caliphate. Obama-backed Muslim Brotherhood member Mohamed Morsi in Egypt, in which the Brotherhood's own founding documents call for the destruction of the United States. The Muslim Brotherhood must understand that their work in America is a kind of grand jihad in eliminating and destroying the Western civilization from within and sabotaging its miserable house. Is in fact Barack Hussein Obama a member of the Muslim Brotherhood backing the Islamic State, committed to placing America under the control of a worldwide Islamic caliphate? Um, right now, these are the six main Muslim Brotherhood operatives that advise President Obama on a daily basis. 
These are vile individuals that are anti-American. They have been placed in these high levels by this administration. I mean, these guys are deeply involved. An uncovered Muslim Brotherhood document publicized in a terrorism funding trial in 2008 calls for the destruction of the United States. Muslim Brotherhood presidential candidate Mohamed Morsi proclaimed before thousands of supporters that jihad is our path. Despite this, Barack Obama welcomed Mohamed Morsi with open arms when he was elected president of Egypt and continued to support him while non-stop reports surfaced that the Muslim Brotherhood had set up torture chambers for its political opponents and openly crucified Christians. With the Muslim Brotherhood taken out of power to the chagrin of our Muslim Brotherhood president, Barack Obama, the Egyptian military now in power has discovered a treasured trove of documents linking the Obama regime with the illegal activities of the Muslim Brotherhood. One such document is a list of Muslim Brotherhood officials receiving secret bribes in U.S. currency paid out by the U.S. consulate amounting to millions of dollars. Investigative journalist Jerome Corsi has obtained a copy of the document held by the Egyptian military proving the Obama regime sent millions of dollars in bribes to the Muslim Brotherhood. But who was managing all of this money? Did the Muslim Brotherhood walk around with hundreds of thousands of dollars in their pockets? Enter Malik Obama, Obama's half-brother. According to Egyptian television, as reported by Jerome Corsi, the Supreme Constitutional Court of Egypt wanted to, quote, inform the American people that their president's brother Obama is one of the architects of the major investments of the Muslim Brotherhood. We're not just talking about the bribes the Muslim Brotherhood received in Egypt, but the entire Muslim Brotherhood finances worldwide that more than likely includes an astounding $8 billion bribe to the Muslim Brotherhood made by the Obama regime, as reported by Egypt Daily News and Arabic News TV 14. The bribe was payment to guarantee that the huge tract of Egyptian land, the Sinai Peninsula, be turned over to the Muslim Brotherhood sister group, Hamas. According to Egypt Daily News, a document exists showing the $8 billion agreement with the Obama administration that was signed by former Muslim Brotherhood President Mohamed Morsi and his second-in-command, Karat al shatur both under arrest by the Egyptian military for murder and treason. Does this document really exist, showing the $8 billion bribe signed by Obama or one of his representatives? Undoubtedly. According to the Anatolia news agency, Saad al shatur the son of Karad al shatur said that his father, prior to being arrested, had in his hand evidence that would put President Obama in prison and no doubt this is the document he was referring to. If the Egyptian military releases this document, it would no doubt spell the end of the Obama administration and mean a long prison term for treason for Barack Hussein Obama.